from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Good morning from day three of theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2018 from the Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin and I'm joined by my co-host Justin Warren. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, Lisa. We're excited to welcome to the first First time to theCUBE, Jesse Rothstein, the co-founder and CTO of ExtraHop. Jesse, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, so ExtraHop, you guys are up in Seattle. You are one of Seattle's- Sunny Seattle. Sunny, <laughs> sunny Seattle. So, one of the best companies up there to work for. Tell us about ExtraHop. What do you guys do in the software space? Great, well, ExtraHop does network traffic analysis. And that can be applied to both performance, you know, performance optimization as well as cybersecurity. Now, I'm, I'm not unbiased, but what I would tell you is that Xdrop extracts value from the wire data better than anybody else in the world. And that's, that's our, our, our fundamental belief. We believe that uh, if you can extract value from that wire data and, and insights and apply in, in real time you know, analytics and machine learning, then uh, this can be applied to a variety of use cases, as I said. That, that's quite interesting. Some of the use cases we were talking about it um, off camera. So uh, some of the things around micro segmentation, particularly for security, as you mentioned, is is really important. And, and also in uh, in software defined networking. So the fact that you are software and software defined networking, we've had a few guests on the cube so far over the last couple of days. That's something which is really ex uh, experiencing a lot of growth. We have VMware who's talking about their NSX uh, software defined networking. So maybe you could give us a bit of uh, detail on how ExtraHop helps in those situations. Well, I'm I'm paying a lot of of attention to VMware's vision and kind of the journey of NSX and software, really software defined everything, yeah. uh, as well as, and, and with NSX you see a lot of applications towards security, kind of a, a zero trust, least privilege model, which I, I think is very exciting and, and there are some great trends around that, but as we've also seen, it's, it's difficult to execute. Uh, it's difficult to execute to build the, the policies such that they maybe don't, don't don't break. Uh, uh, from, from my perspective, uh, a, a product like ExtraHop, a solution like ExtraHop, uh, we work great with software defined environments, first because they have, they enable the, the type of visibility that we offer, in that you can tap traffic from a variety of locations for the purposes of analysis. Um, if left to its own devices, I think these increased layers of abstraction and increased kind of uh, you know, policy frameworks have the potential to introduce complexity and to, to limit visibility. And this is where solutions like ExtraHop can provide a, a great deal of value. And uh, we'll, we apply to both your traditional you know, on-prem environments as well as these hybrid and even public cloud environments. So the ability to get visibility across a, a wide range of environments really pervasively in the hybrid enterprise is I, I, I think a, a big value that we offer. You know, we're at VMworld and on, on day one on Monday, uh, Pat Gelsinger talked about like the average enterprise has eight, eight or nine clouds. Mm. I heard somebody the other day say that they, they had four and a half clouds. I didn't know you could have a half a cloud, but <laughs> you can. So multi-cloud, a big theme here, that's more kind of you know, the vision and the direction that VMware's going to go into, but to your point, it, it, customers are living in this world. It's not about embracing it, it's they're in it. But that also, um, I think by default, that can create silos that, that enterprises need to understand or to wrap their heads around. And to your point, they have to have visibility because the data is the power and the currency only if you can have visibility into it and actually extract insights and take action. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Xtrop customers are primarily large enterprises and carriers and every single one of them is somewhere on their own cloud journey. You know, maybe they're just beginning it, maybe they're, they're quite mature, maybe they're, they're doing a, a lot of uh, you know, uh, data center consolidation or some amount of workload migration to public cloud. No matter where they are in that journey, uh, you know, they, they require visibility into those environments and I think uh, it's extremely important that they have the same level of visibility that, that they're accustomed to in their on-prem environments with their traditional workloads at, as well as any sort of born in the cloud workloads. But I, I, I want to stress it's, 
visibility for its own sake it isn't very useful. Uh, organizations are drowning in data, they're, they're drown, you can drown in visibility. Uh, so for us, the, the real trick is to extract insights and, and bring them to your attention. And that's where we've been investing in data science and machine learning for about four and a half to five years. And this is before it became trendy as it is today. Superpower, I mean, there, like there's, Pat called it. Uh, there's so much ML washing. You know, when you when you walk any any show floor, almost every vendor talks about you know their AI and machine learning, and yeah. a lot of it's exaggerated. But what I'll say for for Xtrap is that, of course, ours is real, <laughs> and we've been investing in this for for years. And our, our vision was that we had this unbelievable amount of data. You know, when you're looking at the wire data, you're not just drinking from the fire hose. You're you're drinking from Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. and you you have all of this data. And then with machine learning, you need to perform feature extraction on the data. That's essentially what data science teams are very good at. And then build the, the ML models. So our, our vision was that we don't want to just give you a big pile of data or a bunch of charts and graphs. We actually want to bring things to your attention so that we can say, hey Lisa, you know, look over here. There's, there's something unusual happening here. Or in, in many cases, there's a potential threat or there's suspic suspicious behavior, an indicator of compromise. And that's where that sort of machine learning I, I believe is the kind of the the, the well the, the certainly the current her horizon or the state of the art for cybersecurity, and it's extremely important. Mm. Jesse, can you give us an example of one of your enterprise customers and, and how they've used Extra Hop to, to manage that, that complexity that Lisa was talking about, that, that visibility that they need to get through all the different layers of abstraction, and, and maybe if there's one, a, an example of how they've done some cybersecurity thing, particularly around that machine learning of detecting an anomaly that they need to deal with. Sure, I mean, I, I can, I can think of a lot. Uh, one customer in mind, and I, I, I unfortunately I, I can't actually name them as a is a very large retail customer. And, and, and what I what I love about them is they actually have Xtrap deployed at thousands of retail sites, as well as their their data centers and distribution centers. And not only does Xtrap give them visibility into the the kind of the logistics operations, and they've used Xtrap to detect performance degradations and things like that that were preventing them from, uh, you know, literally preventing. The, the trucks from kind of rolling out, yeah. uh, but they're also starting to use extra more and more to to uh, monitor what's going on at the retail sites, in particular looking for potential compromises in the point of sale systems. Um, right. We have another customer that's a, a large uh, telco carrier, and uh, they used extra hop. Uh, at one point to actually monitor phone activations. Uh, because this is something that can be frustrating if you buy a new phone and you, you know, maybe it's an iPhone and, and you, go to, you go to activate it, uh, it has to communicate to all these different servers, it has to perform some sort of activation, and if, if that process is somehow slow or could take a long time, that, that's very frustrating to your users and your customers. So they, they needed the ability to, to see what was happening and certainly if it was taking longer than it, than it usually does. Uh, so that's a, a very important use case. And then we have a, a number of customers on, on the cybersecurity side who are looking for both the ability to detect potential breaches and, and maybe ransomware infections, okay. uh, but also the ability to investigate them rapidly. And this is extremely important because in cybersecurity, you have a lot of products that are essentially alert cannons. You know, a product that just says, hey, hey, you know, look at this, look at this, look at this, I, I think we found something. And, and that just creates noise. That just creates work for cybersecurity teams. So the, the ability to actually surface high quality anomaly and threats and streamline and even automate the, the workflows for investigation is, is super important. It, it's not just, hey, I, I think I found something, but hey, let's, let's take a click or two and investigate what it is so we can, we can make a decision, uh, does this require immediate action or not. Now, for certain sort of detections, we can actually take an automated response, uh, but there are a variety of detections where you probably want to investigate a little more. Yeah. I also noticed the Purdue Pharma case study uh, on your website and looking at sort of the, some of the uh, bottom line impacts that, you, that your technology is making where they saved, reduced their data center footprint by 70% and increased app response times by 70%. And we're talking about you know, pharmaceutical data. You guys are also very big in the healthcare space so we're talking about literally potentially life saving situations that need to be acted on immediately. 
I, cer certainly that can be true. Uh, he healthcare, there, there can be life and death situations and timely access to, to medical records, to medical data, you know, whether it's a, you know, a, a, a workstation inside an exam room or an iPad or, or something like that can be a absolutely critical. Uh, you often see a lot of desktop and application virtualization in the healthcare environment, uh, primarily due to the protection of um, you know, uh, PHI, you know, personal health information, uh, and, and HIPAA constraints. So very common deployments in those environments, and if if the, the logins are slow or if there's an, an inability to access these records, it can be devastating. Uh, so we have a, a large number of customers who are uh, you know, essentially care providers, you know, hospital chains and, and such that use XTROMP to ensure that they have timely access to these records. Mm. And, and that's, that's more on the performance side. Uh, we also have healthcare customers that have used our ability to detect ransomware infections. Uh, ransomware is just a, 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 a bit of a plague within healthcare, okay. uh, unfortunately. Uh, it, that industry vertical has been hit quite hard with those infections. And uh, the ability to detect a ransomware infection and perform some sort of you know, immediate quarantining is extremely important. And this is where I think micro-segmentation comes into play. Because as these environments are more and more virtualized, Natural micro-segmentation can help limit damage to ransomware, but you know, more often than not, these, uh, these systems and workstations do have access to something like a network drive or a share. But what I like about micro-segmentation is, is the flexibility to configure the policies. So when a, a ransomware infection is, is, is detected, you know, we have the ability to, to quarantine it and shut it down. And, and uh, keep in mind that there's Defense in depth is, is kind of a security strategy that we've been employing for decades. You know, literally multiple layers of protection. So there are always protections at your, your gateway, your firewall, you know, at the perimeter, your NGFW, and there are protections at the endpoint. But if these were 100% effective, we wouldn't have ransomware infections. So, so unfortunately they're not, and we, we always require that that last, and maybe a last line of defense where we examine what's going on in the east-west corridor and we look for those, those potential threats and that sort of suspicious activity or, or even known behaviors of, uh, that, that are known to be bad. Well, Jesse, thanks so much for stopping by theCUBE and sharing with us what ExtraHop is doing and what differenti differentiates you in the market. We appreciate your time. My pleasure, Lisa. Justin, thank you so much for having me. And we want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Justin Moore, and stick around. We'll be back day three of VMworld 2018 coverage in just a moment.